Hello Bethune Academy cadets, Mr. Briggs here. Thank you for joining me for another um, art class on our e-learning series. And um, let's start. Just remember that you are an artist. This is your time and space to create art. And we'll talk a little bit about what do artists do. Um, today, we'll talk about the elements of design, the studio habit of mind, observe, and We'll focus on texture. Our studio habit of mind for today is observe. Say this with me. I can look more closely and see what otherwise may not be seen. I can look more closely and see what otherwise may not be seen. Um, when you observe, you're really trying to think of all the details. Um, and it's been suggested uh, by another artist, I can't remember her name right now, that if you if you feel like an object is boring, then you need to spend more time with it. Look at it a little bit longer. Look at it a little bit longer. Now, the elements of art, we've focused on three of them so far, and those are line, shape, and color. But there are seven elements in total. And these are kind of the 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 words that an artist uses. So like if a writer uses words to tell their story, an artist uses the elements of art to tell their story. So we have lines, which um, you can use different types of tools to make different kinds of lines. Shapes, we learned that they can be geometric, like you might see in math class, or organic, a more natural shape. Colors can be bright, dull, dark or light, and we learned about primary colors, secondary colors, warm and cool colors, and also complementary colors. Another element of art is space, and that's the, it's the area that exists around us. And in art, we use illusions, like magicians, to make space in art, make things look like they're close and far away. Um, the element we'll focus on today is texture, and that's how the surface of something looks or like it feels to the touch. Um, for example, where I'm sitting, the carpet across from me looks very soft. If I touched it, it would be very soft and kind of maybe a little bumpy under my fingers. Form is an element of art, and that is a three-dimensional, I don't want to say shape, but it's a three-dimensional object and it has volume and it takes up space. And sometimes we get space shape and form mixed up. You know, if we, we're talking about shapes, I, I sometimes hear students say, oh, a cube, a cylinder. And those are forms. Um, a cube is kind of a square. If you take a flat square and you make it three dimensional and it becomes a form and it becomes a cube. A cylinder is a circle on the bottom and a circle on the top. So those are the flat shapes. And then in between those two circles is the height and that makes it three dimensional. So form is three dimensional and value is the lightness or darkness of a surface. So when we look at something, if it's really dark, that would have a dark value. If it looks lighter, it will have a light value. Shadows will be a dark value. Highlights will be light values. Um, so our elements of art are line, shape, color, space, texture, form, and value. The textures, textures can be how a surface feels to the touch or how a surface looks like it feels, the visual texture. This artwork here, it's a close-up of an artwork by um, an artist named Albrecht Durer called Rhinoceros, and it's a woodcut, which means um, the, the, the picture was made by carving into wood and then putting ink on the wood and putting paper over the, the ink and paper and then pulling it off to make the image. Um, it's kind of a complicated printing process that um, might be done more by adults. Um, but this uh, rhinoceros by Albrecht Durer was made in 1515. That's a long time ago. And um, I found this interesting. Um, the image is based on a written description, a written description by an unknown artist of an Indian rhinoceros that had arrived in Lisbon in 1515. Now, Albrecht Durer had never seen the actual rhinoceros um, and because Albrecht Durer lived in Europe. 
um, he'd never seen an actual rhinoceros. And in 1515, the king of Portugal, Manuel I, sent the animal, the rhinoceros, as a gift to Pope Leo X. Um, but the animal died in a shipwreck off the coast of Italy in 1516. So a live rhinoceros was not seen again in Europe until a second one, which had a name, Abeda, arrived from, the in, from India at the court of Sebastian of Portugal in 1577. So um, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how artists can be inspired. Even if you don't see something, you might read a description and want to try to capture that idea so that people can see what is being described. And look at all of the different shapes that Albrecht Dürer used. Um, you can see that this looks like it would be kind of rough or bumpy if you rubbed your hand against that. Right here, they, where it looks like it could be like ribs. And down here, it looks like that could be kind of scaly feeling. I bet you could imagine that. Um, under your hand. And over here, it looks like there's some kind of furry textures with the lines that go t -t 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 right next to each other to make kind of a fur. Um, something that might be interesting to think about is what seems to be kind of the same between texture and pattern? What seems to be the same between texture and pattern? So what will you do today? Observe. I want you to look around you, look around your house, look around your classroom, or look around your mind and your imagination and think, how can you capture texture? You might choose one of these options as uh, one of your choices. Find something, an object, and try to draw what you see and draw the texture, like this awesome basketball here. You could even get really close to it and try to draw just the texture. Um, also, you could make a crayon rubbing of different textures. Find some, find some areas and put a paper over it and then rub a crayon on top of the paper and you'll capture the texture. Or use your imagination and draw an object or an animal with a different or unusual texture. This artwork is by an artist with the last name Oppenheimer and it is called Fur Cup. And it's kind of a funny take. Um, it's an it's a artwork that may, might make you think, hmm, do I want to use that cup? Would I want to drink from that? What would it feel like if I could pick it up? Why would I want to use this or not want to use this? Um, so think of something that you could give an unusual texture to and draw or maybe try to create it. Um, I'll create another video that you'll see um, soon here, and it will have some ideas of how you can capture texture. So um, keep up the great work, and until next time, bye.